Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to start the general lecture. The Honorable Mr. Sugiharjo, Head of Human Resources Development on Agency of Transportation. Mr. Tan Ho Son, Senior Director, Communication International and Legal, Chief Transformation Officer, Maritime and Port Authority of Singapore. Mr. Benjamin Wong, Director International of Maritime and Port Authority of Singapore. Head of Center for Partnership Facilitation and International Organization, Ministry of Transportation of Indonesia. Mr. Popik Montanasya, Secretary of Agency Human Resources Development on Transportation. Secretary of Director General of Sea Transportation. Mr. Sahatsuwa Simatupang, Head of Human Resources Development Center on Sea Transportation. Directors and Head of Training Institutes under the Ministry of Transportation. Official of the Maritime and Port Authority of Singapore, Official Ministry of Transportation of Indonesia, Cadet, Participants, Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, Good morning. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Warm welcome to everyone. First of all, let us pray and praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of His bless and mercy, we can come together without any obstacle here with healthy condition for general lecture of Singapore's maritime transportation management challenges and opportunities. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dimitri. It's precious chance for me to be your master of ceremony today. On this special morning, we have several agenda which is consists of six parts. Opening, singing Indonesian national anthem Welcoming remarks from Mr. Tan Ho Soon from Maritime and Port Authority of Singapore. Opening remarks from Mr. Sugi Hajo, Head of Human Resources Development Agency on Transportation. And we have our main agenda, which is presentation from the speaker, which will be guided by moderator. And lastly, a discussion. As the first agenda of today's event, let's stand together Tossing Indonesian Anthem. I would like to invite all the participants, ladies and gentlemen, to stand up.
participant, please kindly have a seat. Now let's continue to the next agenda, which is welcoming remarks from Mr. Tan Ho Soon. For Mr. Tan, time is yours. Bapak Sugi Hajo, Head of Human Resources Development Agency, Ministry of Transport, Republic of Indonesia. Distinguished officials from the Ministry of Transport, distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, Selamat Bagi. I would like to first thank the Human Resource Development Agency of the Indonesian Ministry of Transport for inviting MPA to speak at this webinar. I understand that we have cadets from the various institutes and polytechnics all across Indonesia who are virtually attending this lecture. I hope you are keeping well and safe. I would also like to take the opportunity to congratulate our colleagues from the Directorate General of Sea Transportation for the successful implementation of the traffic separation schemes of the, at the Lombok and Sundai streets earlier this month. MPA is glad to have worked with DGST on the adoption of the traffic separation schemes at the IMO. Indonesia is an important neighbour and friend of Singapore. We share much in common. Both countries are maritime nations. Indonesia is the world's largest archipelago state with over 17,000 islands. And Singapore is an island state that has been a port even from our earliest days in the 13th century. Both countries sit at the nexus of global trade and the, um, and the maritime industry is a critical part of our respective national economies. It's based on the shared interest that our relationship is built on. Over the years, our countries have cooperated on various fronts to achieve much together. We established close operational links we conducted joint exercises to prepare for contingencies. We are working alongside at multilateral platforms such as the cooperative mechanism and tripartite technical experts group to engage stakeholders to improve the navigational safety and environmental protection of the streets of Malacca and Singapore. We are also supporting each other's work at ASEAN and at the International Maritime Organization. In addition, there are frequent exchanges between our personnel and officers through DGST MPA training MOU. I believe we can achieve much more together. We are meeting in an extraordinary time. Today's webinar is not only useful in promoting better mutual understanding and cooperation, but also share perspectives on how we can overcome the COVID-19 pandemic which have become the greatest challenge of our generation. It's imperative that we keep ports open to minimize disruption to the global supply chain. Beyond the immediate challenges, we must develop human resources to adapt to the new normal post COVID-19. To prepare for the future, we should also keep sight of the longer term issues such as climate change, decarbonization, and the drive towards digitalization in the maritime sector. I believe there'll be many opportunities for our two countries to work together on many of these issues. As cadets, the world is the oyster. Rays of sunshine lie beyond the current dark clouds. I hope today's session will give you a good overview of the work we do here in MPA, the common interests we share and the common future we can co-create. On this note, I wish all of you a fruitful discussion and exchange. Terima kasih. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tan, for the speech. Now, the next agenda is opening remark from Mr. Sugiharjo, and to officially opening this general lecture, Mr. Sugiharjo, time is yours.
communication. I repeat. Honorable Mr. Tan Hushun, Senior Director, Communication International, International and Legal Chief, Transformation Officer. Mr. Benjamin Wong, Director International of Maritime and Port Authority Singapore, Head of Center for Part Partnership Facilitation and International Organization, Ministry of Transportation, Head of Human Resources Development Center on Sea Transportation, Ministry of Transportation, Directors and Heads of Training Institutes under the Ministry of Transportation. Officials of Maritime and Port Authority Singapore, Singapore Embassy to Indonesia, and Ministry of Transportation of Indonesia. Cadet participants, guests, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very good morning to all of you. First of all, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to Honorable Mr. Tan Hushun for your opening speech and also to Mr. Benjamin Wong for the general lecture that will be presented. And warmest welcome to all of the participants to this event that we call Virtual General Lecture, Maritime Transport Management Challenges and the Opportunities. It is my pleasure for us especially for our cadets to have you here in this event to give us lecture regarding the management of port and sea transportation. It is such an opportunity, especially for the cadets. From what we understand, Singapore has always regarded the maritime sector as a pillar supporting the economy development and have an advanced technology and sea management transportation system. For that reason, by this general lecture, we hope that the speakers could share their success story, how to establish and improve the maritime sector. And for the cadet, I hope you all could gain the knowledge and learn more and expand your understanding about transportation system in Singapore. Participants, guests, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce our agency to the speakers and participants. The Agency of Human Resources Development on Transportation is an institution under the Ministry of Transportation which is responsible to develop the human resources on transportation for the regulation, for the, also for the industry. This role and responsibility has manifested by establishing the grand design of IRD on transportation, which consists of sea transportation, land transportation, and civil aviation. Our agency also managed 27 education and training institutions with 16,000 cadets in total, which are located around Indonesia, from west to the east part of Indonesia, which include 10 institutions for sea transportation. One of our strategy to enhance the value of our graduated in nation and international transportation industry is through improvement, the quality and the competencies of the cadet. Fulfillment of the national and international standard, also one of the most important thing that considered to be focused on. This general lecture by the MPA and our international cooperation partners could be the excellent option. Participant, guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as a country with the fourth biggest number of seafarers, Indonesia is also committed to continuing taking an active role in implementing marina, maritime training and education with around 
575,000 seafarers. Indonesia has fulfilled a number of international requirements through training and education, as well as through technical cooperation with the IMO. As we are all knew that Singapore is very modern and advanced in shipping and port, it is also unknown. It is also known for the its instrumental international hub in this region. This is this essential role, along with Indonesia growing maritime platform, is able to establish future framework maritime development. This development can be the role model for other emerging frameworks in the future. I hope we could gather all the opportunity to work together, enhancing our knowledge and experience with the current transportation condition, which as we are aware that in the revolution industry 4.0 era, the collaboration country is a must. Indonesia, as Mr. Tan Husun mentioned previously, as the biggest, largest archipelago country, and also located in the strategic country between Asia and Europa, and also there are three linkages pass through Indonesian territory, territory and there Indonesia is the very potential based on the location, also based on the population, also based on the natural resources. On the other hand, as we all know that Singapore is the very modern country in Southeast Asia, so the collaboration between Singapore and Indonesia is uh, very strategic for the Indonesia and also for the Singapore and the effect could be beneficial also for the ASEAN and for the global uh, the last one uh, finally by saying Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I declare webinar of maritime transport management challenges and opportunities is open. I thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Mr. Sugiharjo, for the speech. Our next agenda is general lecture, which will be delivered from a representative of Maritime and Port Authority of Singapore and will be guided by moderator Ms. Sindura Hayu, Head of General Affairs, Affairs Division of Human Resources Development Agency on Transportation. For Ms. Sindhu, time is yours. Uh, Honorable Head of Human Resources Development Agency on Transportation, uh, Secretary of Agency, Head of Human Resources Development Center on Sea Transportation, uh, Head of Merchant Marine uh, Institution, Jakarta. Uh, our speaker, and also Mr. Tan, and all the participants, cadets, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Sindura Hayu. It is a uh, Great honor for me to be your moderator on this uh, very important event of uh, general lecture that uh, conducted by Human Resources Development Agency on Transportation in collaboration with the uh, Maritime and Port Authority of uh, Singapore. Uh, that's why I would like to thank our colleague, Ms. Wenjili, and also Mr. Uh, Ko for making this happen in this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, as mentioned by our uh, speakers today, that uh, Indonesia is the largest archipelagic country in the world with hundreds uh, of seaports and more than a million seafarers. 
that sell on uh, either domestic and international voyage. And that is why Indonesia have to manage all the resource to get advantage by a collaborative action with our nearest neighbor country that has sophisticated management of sea transportation system. In this case, uh, with Maritime and Port Authority of Singapore. And also mentioned by uh, Mr. Tan that uh, MPA Singapore and DGST uh, of Ministry of Transportation of Indonesia have uh, long, long time story of uh, cooperation under the MOU training between DGST and MPA. And uh, from what I know, last year, they just uh, conducted their uh, annual meeting. And uh, from what also I hear that the meeting uh, conducted very well. Therefore, I would like to invite our speaker today. He is the director of international at the Maritime and Port Authority of Singapore. That uh, this division responsibilities include strengthening MPS international, regional, and bilateral relation, and engaging overseas counterpart and organization to make the progress on international maritime issues. Our speaker previous appointment in the MPA included heading department in the policy division and shipping division, including uh, CFR management department and serving in the CEO's office. He has bachelor art in history from National University of Singapore and a master of art with distinction in war studies from King's College University of London. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Mr. Benjamin Wong. Hello, Mr. Wong. Can you hear me? Hello, Sindhu. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. I can hear you clearly. Uh, selamat pagi to everyone. Good morning. Selamat pagi. Good morning. Mr. Wong, how are you? Good, good. Yeah. I'm very happy to be here. Yeah. I can see that you can hardly wait to deliver your presentation. <laughs> yes. In accordance to the agenda, uh, the general director will uh, will be consist of two sessions. First, uh, presentation from uh, Wong, or can I call you Ben? Oh yes, please, please, Sindhu. <laughs> yes, uh, forty-five minutes uh, presentation from Ben, and also uh, will be followed by 40 mi forty-five minutes uh, question and answer uh, by our cadets, and. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, now we are about to hear a presentation that delivered by Mr. Wong titled Maritime Transport Management Challenges and Opportunities. Mr. Wong, you may deliver your presentation, please. Thank you, Sindhu. Let me try to get my PowerPoint slides up first. Co-host. Oh, Sindhu, uh, we are trying to share our PowerPoint slides. Uh, we're trying to co-host PowerPoint slides. Can you allow us to be the co-host and then so uh, that we can share our slides? We granted you. Okay, we granted. Okay, great. Uh, this one. Yeah, is there another function? No? This is the only one. No? Hold on, just give me a minute. We're trying to share our screen. Does it show here? No. No, is it? Can you? Okay, can we help you? I mean, we will share the your presentation from ah, here. If it's if it's possible. Yes. Yes. Sure. Uh, can you try please one more time to share uh, your presentation? To share my screen, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Ja, ihr habt den Zoe? Okay, you should share from yours. Ah, here we go. Okay, Sindhu, can you see the screen? Yes, clearly. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, so, Salama Pagi to everyone again. And uh, also, good morning to Pak Sugihajo. And also, good morning to you, Sindhu. And also, good morning to some of the familiar faces I see. I can see uh, Pak, so, Pak Sahatwa, as well as Pak John Kennedy. So, it's all very old friends here. And once again, I'm very happy to join DJST and my colleagues from MOT Indonesia for this general lecture. And we're very honored to be able to share our experiences in MPA. Next slide. Okay, this, for this morning, I will cover these three areas. First, I'll cover the role of MPA. Second, I'll cover the close maritime relations between Singapore and Indonesia. And third, I will look at the key challenges and opportunities for the maritime industries moving ahead. Next slide. Okay, if I can begin, let me first introduce the roles of MPA Singapore. As you can see on the slide, the MPA is a statutory board under the Singapore Ministry of Transport. For us in MPA, we oversee Singapore's port and maritime affairs while our sister st statutory boards, the Civil Aviation Authority of Singapore and the Land Transport Authority look into aviation and land matters. Next. One of the key roles of NPA is as a port authority. It is our responsibility to ensure safety and security in our port and Singapore waters. We do this through various ways, including through the vessel traffic information system. And besides safety, we also contribute to marine security, maritime security on two fronts. Locally with enforcement agencies such as the Singapore Police Coast Guard and internationally with our neighbors, Indonesia and Malaysia, as well as contracting parties to the Regional Cooperation Agreement on Combating Piracy or RECAP. Another of our roles in MPA is as a port regulator. MPA regulates and licenses port and marine services such as the container, ferry and cruise operators. MPA also ensures quality pilotage, towage and bunkering services, which are important support services for the smooth functioning of our port. Next. Next, as a national maritime representative, MPA works closely with stakeholders at regional and multilateral meetings to achieve common objectives at forums such as the IMO. Singapore seeks to build good relations with the international maritime community through various engagement programs, such as our third country training program with the IMO, which provides training to maritime officials from all over the world, including Indonesia. Singapore has also been an active member of the IMO Council since 1993. And as a responsible IMO member state, Singapore has acceded to all the major IMO conventions conventions, and we ensure that these conventions are effectively implemented. Next. Next, I will cover the maritime transport cooperation between Singapore and Indonesia. As you can see on the slide, Indonesia and Singapore enjoy a strong maritime transport relationship, underpinned by close cooperation at international regional and bilateral levels, which I'll talk about over the next few slides. First, at the bilateral level, we enjoy very strong links with MPA's direct counterpart, the Directorate General of Sea Transportation. As operational agencies, we cooperate on many fronts, ranging from regular exchanges between our leaders, between our Director Generals, to operational coordination on the ground, One key area of our cooperation is the Joint Ferry Mishap Contingency Plan. As there is a significant number of passengers plying between Capri 
and Singapore, both Indonesia and Singapore have a common interest in enhancing the safety of regional ferries and ensuring that services operate smoothly. The contingency plan will ensure prompt activation and successful search and rescue operations in the event of a mishap involving regional ferries plying between Capri and Singapore. The Joint Ferry Mishap Contingency Plan was successfully reviewed in 2018, and the first tabletop exercise under the plan was conducted in the same year. Moving forward, both DGST and MPA are now working towards a full-fledged field training exercise soon. Next slide. Another example of our strong operational cooperation is the coordinated search and rescue efforts for the Air Asia plane QZ8501 in December 2014. In this example, DGST and MPA worked closely together in the endeavor. DGST provided the survey platform, personnel, and logistics for the successful search and rescue, search and location of Air Asia's QZ8501 black boxes. MPA would not have been able to carry out the task without full DGST's full support and assistance. This coordinated effort is a testament of DGST and MPA's commitment to promoting and maintaining strong operational links. We also cooperate in the area of building capacity in our people. DGST and MPA realize the importance of developing human resources, which is manifested in the DGST MPA training MOU. This MOU demonstrates our collective desire to share best practices in the field of maritime education and training. The MOU was first signed in 2001 and enhanced in 2005. Both agencies have extended the MOU to 2021. Since the start, over 50 training courses in a wide variety of areas have been conducted with the participation of over 1,700 Indonesian officials. The training MOU has allowed for exchange of views and best practices between Indonesia and Singapore, and more importantly, deepen the understanding and relationship between DGST and MPA officers. With the COVID-19 pandemic still ongoing, both agencies are now exploring the use of e-conferencing tools, such as Zoom, to conduct the training and exchanges. We look forward to further deepening the exchange under the training MOU, even amidst the pandemic. Next. Another key common interest between Singapore and Indonesia is the Straits of Malacca and Singapore, which is one of the world's busiest shipping lanes. Singapore, Indonesia, together with Malaysia, have long-standing cooperation under the Cooperative Mechanism on Safety of Navigation and Environmental Protection in the SOMS, as well as in the Tripartite Technical Experts Group, and we meet annually under these two platforms. The TTEG and Cooperative Mechanism are key platforms for the three littoral states to discuss and engage user states and stakeholders on issues relating to the SOMS particularly to enhance navigational safety and environmental protection. Next. First, the TTEG. It was jointly established by Indonesia, Malaysia, and Singapore in 1975. The TTEG is a primary forum for discussing technical issues relating to safety and environmental protection in the SOMS. TTEG meetings are attended by technical experts from the maritime administrations of the three littoral states, as well as observers from user states and organizations. Next, the cooperative mechanism was established in 2007 by the three littoral states and the IMO within the framework of the TTEG. And the mechanism comprises three parts, as you can see on the slides. The first is the cooperation forum, which serves as a dialogue for, which serves as a platform for dialogue. Next is the Project Coordination Committee, which oversees the implementation of projects. And third, the Aids to Navigation Fund, which receives financial contribution from the international community for the provision and maintenance of navigational aid. Now, the launch of the cooperative mechanism in 2007 was a significant event. It was the first instance when Article 43 of UNCLOS 
which calls for cooperation between user states and states bordering a straight use of international navigation was put into operation. Further, under the Project Coordination Committee, we collaborate on a wide range of projects. Singapore is pleased to have supported Indonesia's projects in the PCC, such as Straits Project 5 on the maintenance and replacement of critical issue navigation, and also Straits Project 10 on the study of the blueprint for the future development of safety of navigation and, and marine environmental protection in the songs. Next, I'll highlight some of the examples under the TTEG. One of it is a joint hydrographic study of the Straits, which is an initiative with in-kind and financial support from Japan. The study, a hydrographic survey of the five critical areas in the Somme, was launched in conjunction with the Aid Cooperation Forum in October 2015, where Indonesia was represented by DGST and the Hydro Oceanographic Office of the Indonesian Navy. Next. Another key achievement for the Somme is that together with the Baltic and International Maritime Council, or BIMCO, the three littoral states produced a pamphlet on safe passage for the Somme, which was officially launched at the IMO in 2014. The pamphlet provides useful information for the shipping community when navigating the Somme. And this is another clear example of the benefits when the three littoral states work closely together with user states and stakeholders. At the regional level, Indonesia and Singapore work closely together in ASEAN. Under the ASEAN Maritime Transport Working Group, Indonesia and Singapore, together with other ASEAN member states, signed the MOU on the improvement of safety standards for non-convention ships in 2016. ASEAN also adopted the ASEAN Regional Oil Spill Contingency Plan in 2018. These documents are important steps to promote safe, maritime safety in the ASEAN region. The MOU provides key information for stakeholders to improve the safety of non-convention ships, while the Regional Oil Spill Plan provides a collaborative mechanism for ASEAN member states to build response capacities to oil spill incidents and to promote mutual assistance in controlling and combating oil spills. Next. Last, on the example of cooperation between Indonesia and Singapore, both countries are long-standing IMO member states, and both countries are also members of the IMO Council. At the IMO, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Singapore work together to provide updates to the IMO Council on the progress of the cooperative mechanism and the projects to enhance navigational safety and protection of the marine environment in the Straits of Malacca and Singapore. Again, I would also like to take this opportunity to congratulate Indonesia for the successful implementation of the traffic separation schemes at the Lombok and Sunda Straits earlier this month on 1st July. We greatly appreciate the various consultations which Indonesia held with international stakeholders at the IMO to ensure a successful outcome. Next. Okay, I'm now moving on to the third part of my presentation. This is the last part, and I will touch on the key challenges and opportunities. I'd like to check before I start uh, whether there are any questions. If there aren't any questions, uh, if, if I may, Sindhu, I will just continue. Okay, for this third part, uh, we will address an issue which is important for both Indonesia and Singapore. And I will address two areas. One is addressing the challenges of attracting and retaining manpower in the maritime sector, number one. And number two, adjusting to the new normal arising from the COVID-19 pandemic. Next slide. Now the first one, attracting and retaining talent. Globally, attracting and retaining talent has always been a challenge for the maritime sector. This is the same for Singapore, as we continue to ensure that our workforce is well-trained and well-equipped for changing industry needs. 
We have several long-term plans to prepare for the future. Under the Sea Transport Industry Transformation Map, MPA works closely with various stakeholders, such as government agencies, industries, and unions to develop a future-ready maritime workforce as we move towards a more automated and digital future. Next, the Skills Framework for Sea Transport provides useful information on the career pathways, skills, and competencies for the sector. We set up industry focus groups to discuss matters that impact them, understand their needs, and work hand in hand on initiatives to have greater synergy. Another example is the Maritime One initiative, which was launched to provide a more coordinated approach to the promotion of maritime careers. Maritime One is a partnership involving the MPA, the Singapore Maritime Foundation, and industry associations. It runs activities such as networking events involving students and maritime industry professionals, career fairs, and school talks. Next. Next. Next, I will touch on COVID-19's impact on the workforce in the maritime sector. The pandemic has caused massive global disruption and the maritime sector has not been spared. The situation will remain fluid and it's not evident on how profound the impact will be. There is much that we do not know yet. But what we do know is that a new normal of shipping will be shaped by the intersection of our concerns over lives and livelihoods. This means a new normal of working to preserve lives by minimizing the spread of infectious diseases across borders. This also means a new normal that preserves livelihoods, not just by saving jobs, but by creating new ones. Hence, it is important that employees in shipping that they continue to be reskilled and upgraded to adapt to the new normal. In Singapore, to address this, the government has announced four budgets amounting to a total of $93 billion in support of jobs. And for the maritime sector, MPA launched the Maritime SG Together Package on 1st May. The package will aid maritime companies and seafarers and includes financial support for maritime companies, greater support for upskilling and digital transformation, and financial and employment support for Singaporean seafarers. I will cover also the broad trends for the new normal due to the COVID-19 pandemic. As I mentioned, the COVID-19 pandemic has caused massive disruption to the global economy, transport and trade. As over 80% of the world's trade is carried by sea, ports must stay open so that essential supplies can get to where they are urgently needed to fight the virus. To support this global response, the Port of Singapore has been and will continue to operate 24-7 throughout the pandemic. In this new operating environment, the shipping industry has to adapt to a new normal. I will elaborate on this over the next few slides. First, dig digitalization. Digitalization will be the key, will be key in a new normal. Let me highlight some examples of digitalization and the benefits. One is electronic certificates or e-certs. E-certs bring several benefits. One, it reduces the need for physical interaction, hence preventing the spread of infection while increasing efficiency. Two, e-certs can be sent electronically to ships anywhere in the world almost instantaneously, and as such, eliminate the need and resources collect and deliver paper certificates. And three, it allows for, for more efficiencies in the maritime sector. Charterers, banks, insurers, authorities can all receive the same set of e-certs concurrently, allowing transactions to start without unnecessary waiting times. E-certs have security features that will not only prevent tampering, but also allow for traceability of electronic documents and electronic signatures. In this sense, e-certs actually offer better protection against fraud compared to conventional hard copy certificates. And on the right of your screen is the, is 
the concept of maritime single window. To respond to the IMO facilitation conventions, mandatory adoption of electronic exchange of information for port clearances, we have implemented a maritime single window. This will enable users to submit port clearance applications using a single digital platform instead of several separate agency-based portals. From 16 different forms, which shipmasters were supposed to submit for port clearances, it has now all been streamlined into a single form for submission, hence eliminating duplicative data entries. As different countries implement their digital electronic exchange systems, we realize there is a growing need to harmonize data standards across the various systems. One way to achieve this is by adopting a set of common exchange application programming interfaces or APIs that will enable systems to interoperate and to exchange data, basically to talk to one another despite being different operating systems. Next. Next, on another example of how we have adapted to the new normal is on crew change during the COVID-19 pandemic. Seafarers play a critical role in global seaborne trade. Singapore has been facilitating crew changes under special circumstances, regardless of the crew's nationality. To date, MPA has approved more than 40,000 cases of crew sign-on and sign-off involving some 2,000 companies and almost 3,000 ships. Singapore has established a crew change safe corridor to allow seafarers of various nationalities through our country for crew change. Our procedures are largely in line with the industry guidelines and are endorsed by the IMO. The procedures include direct ship to plane transfer, pre-departure stay home notice, and COVID-19 negative tests. These steps allow us to manage public health risks in Singapore and at the same time, give assurance that the crew signing on board are healthy and will not result in COVID-19 cases on board ships and ports. Next. Next, another aspect of the new normal is decarbonization. There has been progress on decarbonization on of international shipping, such as, such as the adoption of the 2018 IMO initial strategy on the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions from ships. Singapore is committed to environmentally sustainable shipping under IMO's leadership. Like COVID-19, decarbonization is a global challenge, which requires global commitment and action. Discussion on decarbonization of shipping must be inclusive and involve key stakeholders. For Singapore, we actively promote partnerships and, collab and collaboration for decarbonization. For example, the Singapore Maritime Foundation has set up an international advisory panel to garner input from local and international leaders from the industry and research institutes. In addition, MPA and its partners have also launched a $40 million Maritime Green Future Fund to encourage the research, test bidding, and adoption of low carbon technologies. More recently, at the IMO, Singapore has proposed a next gen initiative where GEN stands for Green and Efficient Navigation. Next Gen will be led by the IMO Secretariat in close cooperation in Singapore. Through Next Gen, we hope to bring together various decarbonization initiatives from around the world to facilitate and coordinate global efforts for reducing GHG emissions. Next slide. Okay. This is my last slide for today. And I would like to share more on how we can collectively address the challenges of digitalization and decarbonization, and how we can harness the efforts of Indonesia and Singapore, as well as the other members of the international community. To aid this collaboration, Singapore will host two webinars with the IMO in the next few months under our Maritime Perspective series. 
The first is a webinar on decarbonization on 17 September, where different stakeholders will present views on decarbonization initiatives, covering opportunities and challenges. And the second webinar on digitalization will be on 8 October, where speakers will share their views on how digitalization can transform shipping to meet new demands in the global supply chain. We will, of course, invite Indonesia and, and our Indonesia and our colleagues from DGST and, MO and the Ministry of Transportation to these two webinars. And we look forward to Indonesia's participation in these two events. My colleagues will follow up with more information in due course. Okay. With this, Sindhu, I end my presentation and I look forward to hearing questions from the floor as well as comments and I look forward to a fruitful exchange of views. Thank you. Terima kasih. Thank you, Ben. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's give applause for Ben for his insight, insightful presentation. Anyway, Ben, uh, the last slide, you, you said that you will hold uh, two events, and you also mentioned that you will invite DGST and we hope you can, you can also invite our agency. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so we will send the invitations to yourself yes. Uh, yes. from the Human Resources Development Agency as well as our partners as in the Ministry of Transport. Yes. Definitely. Okay, thank you, Ben. And uh, cadets, ladies and gentlemen, now we are uh, proceed to the next agenda. Uh, question and answer. And... Uh, here I have in uh, my hand now a list of questions that came from uh, the cadets. So uh, for this question and answer session will be divided into three sessions, three rounds I mean. And uh, each round will be consist of uh, three uh, questions. Is it okay, Ben? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. It's okay. Then uh, now we invite the uh, cadet from Merchant Marine Higher Education to deliver their uh, question for STPI Jakarta. STPI Jakarta. Uh, you can deliver your uh, question, please. Okay. Th thank you from STIP Jakarta and ask as we know that, that Singapore is naturally being the gateway to expand Asian market and I do believe that every country also has their own specialization in this maritime industry. The question is how does the MPI do to take advantage of the opportunity or specialization that Singapore has. Uh, okay. You got the point yeah. already? Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, do, okay. do, I, do I answer now or answer later? No, later. Okay. Okay. So uh, okay. next we go to uh, cadets from Barombong, Politeknik Barombong. Operator, can you uh, please mention Politeknik Barombong? Cadet, you can deliver your question now. <laughs> Overseas of this activity in the port area. 
during the COVID-19 pandemic. And the second question is, what is the current level of cooperation undertaken by the MPA exchanging and the pairs in the whole of maritime and non-profession and human resources, especially the maritime and education center in Singapore, and in its orientation to maritime industry. And for the last question, sir, do you have any sense of advice for the relation to the ex? What should you be focusing on so that you can improve the international market sector, especially for the tech and the digital economies? I think that's all for me. Thank you for the more information for the more for the more for the more for the more. Thank you, Polytechnic Barombong. Now we now we proceed to Polytechnic Malahayati. Merchant Marine Polytechnic of Malahayati, Aceh. Are you ready to deliver your question? Yes, ready. Please, cadet. Thank you, sir. Good morning. Let me introduce myself. My name is Dharma Prasetyo from Nautical Department, Marine of Malahayati, Aceh. Here, I want to ask you one question. My question is. As we know that Singapore is located in strategic position in worldwide trading and strongly able to utilize the sea area, how is the management applied to use the sea area with applicable management system? Thank you. Thank you, Kadet. Uh, ben, uh, we have uh, four questions here. Not three, but four. Uh, do you already get the... The, the point, or should yeah. I repeat it for you? Yes. Do you need yeah. to repeat I, it? I have received the questions, uh -huh. and I'm able to answer them if, if you want me to answer them now. Yes, yes, please. Okay. So, thank you very much for all the questions from the Polytechnic, from Barumbong, from Ache. Uh, I understand that there are, if I could group all the questions together, there are basically two questions. One is what Singapore has done in terms of our management of our maritime transportation system. That's the first general question. And the second general question is what has Singapore done in terms of human resources development? So I summarize the four questions into two. So the, for the first question, what Singapore has done in terms of our management is one, I think there are a few success fa factors. And I, if, I, if I could highlight just three. One is we have a very strong adherence and compliance with international rules, with IMO rules. Now, this is simply because shipping is international. So, international, so adherence to international rules means people in the shipping community knows that we are transparent, knows that our ships and ports adhere to international standards when it comes to safety, security, and environmental protection. And that also means that we promote a level playing field and that allows the industry to grow and develop in Singapore. So that's one success factor for Singapore, a strong adherence to international rules, to IMO rules. Two, we also recognize the importance of uh, cooperation in shipping. Uh, we understand that if we do things alone, we can only achieve limited outcomes, limited achievements. But if we work together, if we collaborate together for in our common areas for mutual benefit, we can do much more. And in shipping, this is even more important because shipping is very international. Uh, for example, uh, you can have a Singapore registered ship and on board the ships, you can have cadets from Indonesia, you can have cadets from uh, China, cadets from India. And the ship manager can be somebody from the Philippines. So, like I said, shipping is very international in nature and collaboration and cooperation is very important. And we take this cooperation in shipping very seriously. So, two, this is the second example, uh, rather this is the second success factor for, for Singapore. The importance of promoting international cooperation. I think that 
third success factor for Singapore is we conduct extensive consultations among stakeholders. We, in, in Singapore itself, we have very strong dialogue and interaction with our shipping companies. We have very strong dialogue with our unions and we have very strong dialogue with our domestic agencies. So this strong interagency coordination and this strong cooperation that we have with the shipping industry and as well as the unions allow us, allow our shipping maritime sector to progress and advance. So if I could summarize the three points again on what Singapore has done in terms of maritime management is one, we adhere strongly to international rules, IMO rules and to UNCLOS. Two is we recognize and promote strong cooperation in shipping. And third, we conduct very strong consultation and interagency coordination among agencies and players in Singapore. So those are the three success factors to answer the first question on what Singapore has done. On the second question raised was uh, what Singapore has done in terms of human resources development. Now this again, MPA works very closely and coordinates very closely with a lot of agencies in Singapore. So one, we work very closely with our training schools, with our training academies to understand what sort of syllabus is needed for the students. Two, we also talk very closely with the shipping companies and industry to see what sort of manpower needs they have. And after hearing their needs, then we can tailor better accordingly. We can come up with better programs, better training programs for what the industry needs. So those are the points with regards to the second question, what Singapore has done. We talk very closely with our schools, we consult the industry on what is needed, and we tailor the training program accordingly. So Sindhu, those are my answers to the first set of questions. Okay. So uh, now we proceed to the second round of a question and answer. Pak Ben. Yes, uh, yes, please. Yes, uh, for the next uh, question will come from uh, Polytechnic Pelayaran Sorong. Polytechnic Pelayaran for Sorong, are you ready? Sorong, yes, please, Kadet. Yes. Okay, good morning. Uh, I want to ask some questions, but before that, let me introduce myself. My name is Theo Christy Hadun. I'm a cadet of Sorong and Polytechnic. Excuse me, sir. Maritime Singapore relies on a quality talent pool as a solid structure of support to the industry. It does this by attracting new talent as well as further developing the skill of its existing employers. My question is, I wonder how the NPA implemented the human resource development programs. Thank you. Thank you, Cadet. And uh, now we proceed to PIP Makassar. To the question from PIP Makassar. Makassar, are you ready? Okay. Uh, Polytechnic Ilmu Pelayaran Makassar, the time is yours. Thank you for the chances that I have given to me. Uh, firstly, let me introduce myself. My name is Sir Ayurabidi. I'm from Shipping Tech and Shipping Management Department. Uh, thank you for the chance to deliver my question. Firstly, uh, the first question uh, Can we do the social service associated from our campus as an MTA? And the second question is uh, how, can, uh, how can we get a job in Singapore, especially in maritime sector, if we are first graduate? Uh, does any uh, requirements needed or something? Thank you. Thank you, Cadet. It's a very honest question. Next, we go to uh, Polytechnic 
Banten, Politeknik Pelayaran Banten. Banten, are you ready? Please, Kadat. Kadat, can you hear me? Politeknik Pelayaran Banten. Good morning. My name is Chelsea Karen Umbo. I am the cadet of Benton Polytechnic of Merchant Marine. And thank you, Mister, for the material that you give for us on this in this webinar. And my question is: COVID-19 has caused multiple disruptions of global supply chains, which in turn has impacted the shipping market. As busiest container port in Southeast Asia, what are strategic action to solve this problem? That is my question. Thank you. Thank you, Kadet. Uh, ben, we have uh, three questions here, but I think the second question is very important. How can I get uh, How can I get a job in Singapore? How can I join MPA Singapore? Please, this is very important question to be answered. Okay, Sindhu. Thank you very much for all the questions from Sorong, Makassar, and Banten. I think there are, there are three questions. Uh, the first question is what Singapore has done with regards to our HR programs, uh, human resources program. And the second question is uh, related to uh, jobs in terms of the Singapore, how to get jobs in the maritime sector in, in, in Singapore. For us, I can tell you very frankly, uh, we are a very open country. We welcome talent from all over the world. And if I got my statistics correct, uh, on, a num on many Singapore flagships, uh, a lot of our seafarers are actually Indonesian nationals. And if I remember correctly, I think Indonesian seafarers make up the largest number of seafarers on board Singapore registered ships around the world. So yes, there are a lot of opportunities and there re remain a lot of opportunities for Indonesian seafarer cadets. Then in terms of uh, human resource development, one of the things that NPA has done is we go out uh, to our schools in Singapore to inform students of the various careers that you can have in the maritime industry. Now these careers can range from uh, working on board the ship and also working onshore in uh, maritime law, maritime banking, maritime services. So an important part is for us to go out to the schools, to the universities, to the polytechnics, to inform the youth of the opportunities, the employment opportunities in the maritime sector. So those are the two HR uh, human resource related question. The third question from Banteng, if I recall correctly, is what action Singapore has done uh, in the midst of uh, COVID-19 pandemic. One is, as I mentioned earlier in my slides, the COVID-19 pandemic has caused a lot of economic difficulties for companies around the world. And what we have done, MPA, is together with our uh, other agencies, we have launched a Maritime SG Together package, which provides uh, financial relief to companies and which also provides uh, support to seafarers who are in need. So these are just some of the actions that we have taken to help companies, to help the maritime sector overcome the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. So those are my uh, answers to this second set of questions, Sindhu. Thank you, Ben. Now we uh, will proceed to the last round. Uh, the question, from Politeknik Pelayaran Sumatera Barat, Poltekpel Sumbar. Ayo, Poltekpel Sumbar. Yes, please, Kadet. Udah, langsung. Oke, okay. good morning, semua. My name is Zika Kunendo Putri. I'm from Mission Management Politeknik of Sumatera. And as you know, the shipping industry in Singapore is highly competitive. So my question is, what method are used by the Singapore shipping industry to hire best employees? 
Thank you, Kadet. Thank you, Kadet. And uh, now we go to Politeknik Pelayaran Sulawesi Utara. Sulut. Politeknik Pelayaran Suru, Sulut. Yes, please, Kadet. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Let me introduce myself first. My name is Rinaldi. I'm a cadet from Nautic Department of Merchant Marine of Sulawesi Utara. As you know, sir, the, the management of the sea transportation in Singapore occupy the best class in Asia. With the management of the sea transportation, which is very good and has been supported by modern facility, included with ID program, it is definitely in need of operator who have competence. My question, sir, what concerns do you face in the shipping business world from home and abroad, and how you can overcome them? Thank you, sir. Thank you, Kadat. Very good question. And uh, last, we will go to PIP Semarang. PIP Semarang. Operator, can you help us? Yes, please. Got that. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ivana Evaglista, cadet from Merchant Marine Polytechnic Semarang. My question is, what was the basic infrastructure built in the beginning of port development in Singapore? Were there any political and technical challenges to realize the project plan? Thank you. Thank you, cadet. Uh, ben? You uh, already got the point of uh, their question? Yes. Okay, yes. please. Thank you again for for all the questions. You're all very good questions and I really have to think very hard first before I answer. Uh, one of the questions asked was, what constraints do we face in shipping and how do we overcome them? I think this was the second question. One of the constraints that we constantly face is, of course, human resource talent. Uh, how do we ensure that we have adequately trained maritime officials who are constantly equipped and upgraded to deal with the challenges of the changing maritime industry? So we always think that, you know, we need to constantly send our people for training. We need to constantly look at the new regulations and making sure that our people know what these new regulations are. So that's one the challenge of uh, human talent, uh, human resource development. Two, it's both a challenge as well as an opportunity is uh, technology in shipping. Technology is progressing very fast. So right now we are talking in terms of autonomous ships, in terms of uh, autonomous systems. So it provides an opportunity because automation technology will be provide better efficiency, uh, provide better, uh, more, Will, will ensure safer shipping. So these are opportunities which the technology provides, but the challenge then is how then do we adapt to it? How then do we ensure that our people are trained to take advantage of this technology? So this means we need to constantly upgrade our training syllabus. This means we need to constantly upgrade our training requirements and how we conduct training. And ultimately this also means Evolving the way we operate. Uh, how we operate five, 10 years ago may no longer be relevant going forward you know, for the next five, 10 years. So we need to undertake the difficult task of constantly upgrading our way of operations and our way of doing things. Uh, that's not easy because change is always not easy, but we must change, we must evolve in order to take advantage of technology. The other constraint uh, that I think which is facing all of us, not just in Singapore, uh, is for the, in terms of maritime industry is uh, reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Now this is a uh, uh, challenge for all countries, not just Singapore. And right now, yeah. there's a lot of discussions going on in the IMO. Uh, IMO has already adopted initial strategy and there's already a target of reducing shipping emissions by half by 2050. 
So the challenge now is to get everyone on board, uh, be it uh, governments, industry, engine makers, shipyards, coming together to find what are the solutions available to help shipping meet the IMO emission targets of reducing by 50% by 2050. So decarbonization, I think, is a challenge that will become even more serious going forward. So those are the three uh, challenges and opportunities we face. One is human talent. Two is taking advantage of technology. And three is decarbonization. I think the other question was uh, uh, asking about basic infrastructure that we have in place and what are the uh, political and technical challenges from the start. I think what was important for Singapore was the political commitment uh, behind developing the maritime and port sector in Singapore. Many years ago, 40, 50 years ago, uh, I think Singapore took a bet in terms of uh, developing a container terminal at a time where container terminals was not the norm. So our political leaders back then made a calculated bet that container terminals was the way to go. And once that decision was made, there was a lot of political commitment, political action, and political push behind it. And that allowed the maritime sector in Singapore to uh, progress. And the other aspect which I'd like to point out in terms of what has helped us along is also Again, very strong cooperation uh, with Indonesia, with Malaysia, and with our other ASEAN partners. Because without us working together between countries, I don't think we can achieve much together. So platforms like the TTG, platforms like the ASEAN Maritime Transport Working Group are very, very important for us to grow. Not just us in terms of Singapore, but us in terms as a region and as neighbors. So again, as I mentioned in my speech, the TTG ASEAN cooperative mechanisms are all important platforms for us to grow together, for us to advance together. So, uh, so Sindhu, those are my replies to this third set of questions. I, I hope I've answered the questions uh, adequately. Very tough questions, <laughs> but, but, but very interesting questions. Then, uh, very good questions. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for your valuable uh, answer. Uh, anyway, uh, cadets, if you still have uh, any curiosities about uh, how Singapore managed their uh, maritime transport system, you can uh, you can uh, give the question to us, and we will deliver to Ben to to answer. Right, Ben? Yes, no problem. <laughs> yes, uh, Ben, uh, uh, we still have time here. And uh, from uh, what I see in the screen, we have also participants uh, coming from the Director General of Sea Transportation and uh, Center of Partnership, Facilitation and International Organization. and. Uh, other participants, uh, we would like to invite uh, the participant, the other participant beside uh, cadet and school to also deliver their question. Maybe from uh, transportation atase in Singapore, Pa John Kennedy, is there something you want to say to us here or to the cadet? Pa Kennedy. Pak John Kennedy, no? From pusat fasilitasi, ada Pak Sandi. Pak Sandi, do you want to say something or maybe to deliver a question? Pak John Kennedy, tolong mic-nya. Please turn on mic. your mic, Pak because we cannot hear you. I cannot hear. Pak, Pak Kennedy, can you please turn on your mic? Tolong mic-nya, Pak, atau mungkin masih di-unmute.
Pak Kennedy, can you hear us? We cannot hear you, Pak. Maybe your microphone still in a silent mode. Yeah. But no problem. If if there is anything Pak John Kennedy wants, we can always talk over the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Sin yeah, yep, Sindhu. Yeah, yes. Uh, if if it's okay, I have a question to I have a question to ask about the cadets. Yes. Can I can I ask? Yes, yes, please. So I noticed there are many uh, polytechnics and schools from across the whole archipelago of Indonesia. Can I ask how many maritime academies are there? And then how many cadets are there all together right now? Because I see a lot, but I just don't have a sense of the numbers. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, as mentioned by our head of agency in uh, his speech, we have uh, so many uh, schools around Indonesia, but we have still we have here our head of uh, Center for Human Resources Development on Sea Transportation, Captain Sahatua. Mm. You know him very well. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I will ask Pak Sahatua to answer the question, please, Pak. Thank you, uh, uh, Busindu. Hi, uh, Ben is uh, happened to be my very close friend, and we were together uh, when we were, uh, you know, uh, sponsoring our neighboring countries in IMO London. Yeah, so we used to we used to work together. Thank you very much, Ben, and also thank you very much uh, to Pak Sun, yang. Uh, has already been uh, officially delivering the remarks uh, this morning, early this morning. And um, regarding the question, we have uh, 12 uh, uh, maritime education and training, which is which uh, under the uh, agency, uh, mm. the Ministry of Transportation, and uh, these are all. Uh, subsidiary uh, schools under uh, the uh, Ministry of Transportation, whereas uh, the older schools uh, has already been established in 1953. And hmm. uh, the, uh, the, the youngest is was established about five years ago, uh, hmm. which is uh, in uh, Bitung north of Sulawesi. So uh, from 1953 to uh, 19, uh, 2015, we've been growing very uh, fast uh, from only one higher education for officers uh, become uh, uh, now we have uh, 12, 12 uh, maritime institution, higher institution and vocational schools. 10 higher institution which can deliver vocational study and academical study. So not, uh, from this 10 uh, higher education, we have uh, nine uh, which are uh, vocational and then one can be vocational and also academic, which is uh, in Jakarta. And we have two uh, vocational training for employees of the Ministry of Transportation, especially for the uh, uh, sea transportation. And one uh, vocational institution is also for uh, open, free for public. So there are all 12. But instead, we also have a training center from the private sectors. We have uh, about 15 training centers from hmm. private sectors. Uh, say that we have uh, Pertamina, the largest oil company in Indonesia. They also uh, established the training centers for seafarers. And uh, altogether, we have at the moment about 5,500 uh, cadets um, uh, 
progressing their study. And annually, we will produce about 1,000 cadet officers. Uh, then, uh, uh, yeah, and uh, the number is maintaining uh, the same uh, for the rest uh, for the rest five years. And uh, hmm. I think that is all the information that I can give. Thank you. Thank you, Pak, and good to see you again. Yeah. You still look very young. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I look yeah. uh, also even younger, Ben. Uh, oh, no. Oh no, Pak, I'm losing hair already. <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. thank you very much. Thank you. And, 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 and uh, you know, a uh, couple of uh, weeks ago was uh, actually one year of uh, my visit uh, to MPA. And I, in this opportunity, thank you very much for your facilitation in that time. Thank you. No, no problems, Pak. You are, you are very much welcome. Good, good to see you again. Because yeah. from what I see from the Zoom video, I see an impressive number of schools and academies and a very impressive number of cadets all well turned out in their uniform, all very well disciplined. So it's very impressive. And I'm sure it must be not an easy job to run so many schools across the whole country of Indonesia. So, I, so we take our head off to you for running such a large and efficient system of training academies across Indonesia for all the seafarers. Thank you. Not an easy job. <laughs> thank you. And uh, we also would like to thank you for supporting the Indonesian seafarers uh, so far. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Pak Sahatua. And Ben, uh, since you mentioned about the, the number of our school, uh, I'm curious, how many schools school maritime school do you have in singapore and how the government manage all the schools yeah well in singapore we don't have that many schools a very small number i think we have only have one uh, singapore maritime academy it is so under the government. it's very small compared to what you have in indonesia if i'm not wrong there's only one or two academies in singapore and that's under the polytechnic <laughs> so we have a lot to learn from indonesia on how you run so many schools and run them so efficiently in, in, in that sense. Yeah. I think we have much more to learn from Indonesia um, on, on how it's done. Yes, uh, I just got your sign that we need to make a cooperation in the future. Uh, uh, ben, we also have here our director for uh, Merchant Marine uh, University College. Captain Weku Karuntu, uh, and I will invite him to maybe give uh, some views on this uh, general lecture, on the material, or could be anything else, Pak. Please, Pak. Right, yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Ben. Hi. Hello, Pak. Right. Um, <clears throat> I hear that um, I seen and listen your presentation is very very good and i just introduced uh, my uh, <clears throat> my school is uh, one of the uh, one of the as i had mentioned my college and also uh, my college is already conducting the <clears throat> e-learning method Hmm. since uh, pandemic COVID-19. Uh, <clears throat> even among of them has been implementing that several months before. And we have prepared e-learning as well as we can. So what a smart board, I have a question now. Uh, so what a smart board, what kind effort that will do MPA, especially on human resource development. Because development something, development something new. Our follow new job and new skill. Hmm. More training of poor personnel is needed. Retraining, retraining to focus on activities of greater value added 
also need it sometimes. Uh, could you explain to, especially because our lecturer now also listen your uh, your uh, presentation, your good presentation. Yep. Uh, could you explain just just brief explanation about a new skill that we needed, the new skill that we needed. Thank you, uh, Ben. Okay, Pak. Thank you very much for the question. I understand the question to be uh, in terms of preparing for the smart part of the future and then how do we train for it. Uh, so one example of a smart part is uh, the use of technology in terms of uh, automated key cranes. Uh, those key cranes which we use to uh, load and unload containers from ship to shore. Previously, what we used to do was one person will operate one uh, cargo key crane. But with technology, now some of these key cranes in Singapore are actually automated. So it's no longer one person operate one key crane, but now we're able to do it such that one person can operate four key cranes from a central con from a central room. And what has enabled that to happen is, yes, technology is important. But what is also important is to train our crane operators to be upgraded, uh, to send them for training, to make sure that they are aware of the requirements and to also make sure that they are aware of how to operate the crane safely. So the key element is making sure that the crane operators are updated of the new technology as they come about. That's one in terms of uh, port operations. The other one uh, which we think will happen in the future and is coming is how do we handle autonomous ships? Right now today, when the port talks to a ship, we talk to the shipmaster. It's very clear. But in the future, when you have autonomous ships, uh, you may need to, yes, talk to the shipmaster, but you may also need to use the computer system, the technology systems, so that the people on shore can communicate with the ship more efficiently. Yes, the shipmaster will still be the one to still be in charge of the ship. But technology will help us reduce the burden of the shipmaster. Because right now, as you know, when a ship goes into a port, there are many things a shipmaster needs to do. It needs to fill up the form, it needs to do certain checks, it needs to do certain procedures. So I think autonomous ships will help to lessen the burden on the shipmaster. And when technology and when autonomous ships come into force, comes into play, we need to train our people on how to communicate, on how to handle, on how to operate these autonomous ships. So that's a key area that we need to look at going forward. How to prepare our people for the advent of autonomous shipping in the future. Right. Okay, Ben, yes. A very, very good explanation. You are very brief. Uh, and then I hope my, uh, my lecturer also uh, listen what you uh, explain to 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 me and to everybody here. Thank you very much. That uh, that's the key that you already delivered to us. Thank you, Ben. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Uh, we still have uh, one more school, Pol Tran Pol Polytechnic Transportasi Darat Palembang. Do you want to? Uh, Palembang. Yes, Palembang. Uh, do you want to? Uh, say something or maybe to deliver a question Palembang please Good morning everyone Let me introduce myself my name is Dido Pangestu and I come from Inland Water and Ferries Transport Polytechnic of Palembang Excuse sir We know that Singapore is a big country and Indonesia is a development country. And my question is, how Singapore take care, take care of the maritime transportation in the country and what the different management maritime transportation in Singapore and in Indonesia? Thank you. Thank you, Kadet. Please, Ben. Yeah. Uh, I understand the question to be what are some of the similarities and differences between 
maritime transport in Singapore as well as maritime transportation in Indonesia. In terms of similarities, I think there are many. Uh, for example, the roles of DGST and MPA are very similar. As in, we look at merchant marine and we look at port operations. So that much is similar. I guess where we differ is with regards to, let's say, in other areas like Coast Guard, uh, like law enforcement and security, because I understand that Indonesia being such a big country, you have many agencies which, uh, which, which deals with different aspects. For example, I think there's a Coast Guard unit under the DGST, but we don't have such a similar unit in, uh, in, in, in MPA. In MPA, we just only look at safety issues, but I understand that DGST's Coast Guard maybe have a wider remit. So yes, there are similarities in terms of how DGST and MPA look at maritime transport, but I think there are also differences because due to the size of Indonesian waters, you have a large, a, a, far, num a far larger number of agencies looking at different areas within Indonesia. For example, in terms of fishing, you have a, you have a fishing ministry, uh, whereas in Singapore, we don't have a fishing ministry at, at all. Yeah. So yes, there are, there are some similarities and there are some differences. I hope that answers the question from the cadet from uh, Palembang. Thank you, Ben. Yeah. Uh, is there still any question or maybe a comment yeah. or anything? Oh, yes. There is ben. another question I wanted to ask. Is the, is the enrollment in the schools, the, the number of cadets who join the schools to be a seafarer, has the number been rising or it has been uh, stable? I will ask Pastor. Is there a growing interest? Sorry. Uh, sorry, I was not uh, uh, focusing on this. Can you please uh, say again, uh, Ben, what, what was the question? Yeah, but I just wanted to know the, the enrollment number of students who join schools to become seafarers. Is the number increasing or is the number steady? Okay. Uh, the, the, for the last uh, three years, uh, the data that we have, the numbers are slightly, slightly uh, reducing. Yeah? But oh. as a whole for transportation, land, sea, and air uh, are increasing. Oh. Increasing. That, that uh, those are the the trends at the moment, Ben. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because in in Singapore, the number of uh, people joining the seafaring career very small and is keep de and keep declining. So we are trying to encourage more people to join the seafaring industry, and maybe we thought we could learn a few lessons from you on how you attract people to join the industry as seafarers because yeah. we we face a great challenge i mean in singapore our number of seafarers is only maybe 500 or so very small number so one thing that we are trying to look at is how to, how to attract more of the young people to join yeah. okay i think uh, the same things uh, happening now in indonesia uh, because uh, if we take the uh, uh, data statistical data from uh, 10 years behind the mm. uh, uh, the trends are still increasing increasing okay. but uh, the last three years is uh, maintaining and uh, uh, for after this covid uh, it's a bit uh, uh, confusing for us because uh, things mm. are uncertain at the moment but mm. uh, the last enrollment for our uh, subsidiary uh, cadet intake for this year uh, are increasing. So we have two, okay. two uh, lanes of uh, uh, enrollment. The enrollment which are uh, fully subsidized by the government, enrol en enrollment where uh, the, the young uh, students uh, graduate from senior high school they are hmm. uh, paying their own institu 
tuition fees and this mm. uh, demands um, of those who are entering the enrollment for the subsidiary by the government are increasing mm. but the okay. demand from the uh, self uh, 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 finance uh, cadets are uh, slightly reducing i see i see but there are there are uh, there are uh, various various level of uh, uh, certification there are various level of certification and uh, there are also various demand between uh, uh, this uh, certification we have uh, class 5 until first class uh, certification of competence and uh, the demands are also vary for uh, uh, for those uh, hmm. certification i think that's it uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that i could share thank you ben yeah thank you pa thank can you. Can I also know that during, uh, can I also ask, during this COVID-19 pandemic, the the schools are still conducting lessons? Oh, yeah. Uh, as okay. uh, the, uh, cert, uh, the certificate of competence training and uh, certificate of provision, provision training are actually consists of uh, theoretical and uh, practical uh, uh, hmm. uh, activities. So for uh, theoretical activities, uh, we conduct uh, the uh, uh, study under the uh, uh, distant learning hmm. yeah online and uh, they are uh, study from home but uh, oh, study from home uh, they study from home because uh, the dormitory are uh, in the beginning uh, when the first pandemic COVID 19 uh, uh, breaks in indonesia we hold the cadets in the dormitory for two weeks once they hmm. are okay then we release them uh, to uh, to study from home and uh, oh. it lasts for uh, three months uh, of uh, uh, the cadets to have the study from home and uh, we uh, implement the block uh, system of uh, uh, teaching so the curriculum and syllabi uh, which uh, 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 related to the theoretical knowledge uh, are brought forward and now uh, as uh, the cal uh, academic calendar come into the practical then they are entering again uh, uh, embarking yeah. to dormitory uh, with the physical distancing and strict uh, protocol of uh, uh, health for the uh, mm. Uh, mm. Uh, pandemic COVID procedures yeah yeah a lot of changes huh a lot of changes, lot procedures of changes to and, uh, be put in place. <laughs> then we need to uh, uh, empower people on uh, the schools uh, to uh, have uh, different models of supervision to the cadets yeah. and different t treatment. Yeah. Even the, the, the dormitory also can, also can only be occupied by 50% of the cadets at the moment. Uh, ah. Yeah, a lot of things uh, change, and even the rules and regulation are also changed uh, to uh, uh, to uh, uh, be uh, adapted with the new uh, yeah. uh, uh, normal uh, protocol. Yeah, very challenging. So, how is uh, in uh, Singapore for the poly and the SMA? Are they uh, also doing? things uh, with different uh, method or uh, still continuing or holding on the activities? Uh, I understand that they did quite a number of home-based learning as well. Uh, because for a period of time, all the schools in Singapore were closed. So including the Polytechnic and Academy, they had to close. But now I think slowly the schools are starting to come again. And I think very similar to Indonesia, the capacity has to be reduced cannot be the same capacity anymore yeah. Yeah, so again yeah there's a lot of changes we have to we have to adapt and we have to yeah. and we have to cope to, to yeah, the we, COVID-19 pandemic yeah we implement uh, uh, partly work from uh, study from home and uh, partly uh, 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 study in the uh, uh, schools yeah as usual but Still, the capacity yeah. in the classroom and dormitory are 50%. 50. Yes. 
yeah. 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 We, Hopefully. I guess all of us hope yeah. that COVID-19 will, will go away soon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we, hopefully we, things uh, we really return hope, to some normalcy soon. Yeah, we really hope that we can still maintain at least uh, the uh, uh, support for the, uh, the the crew exchange. Yeah, and the graduates will also be important to be uh, ready to replace the yeah. existing. So the things that uh, are now concerned, our concern is uh, there will be a reducing of numbers to half of, of the. Uh, 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 the the existing or the previous capacity. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Pak yeah. uh, Tua. Uh, is there some, any question or something to say? If not, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have successfully concluded the presentation with topic maritime transport management challenges and opportunities. Uh, that uh, presented by uh, Pak Benjamin. Uh, I will not make a conclusion of this, uh, this presentation, but I will only repeat what Ben has emphasized. First, Indonesia, Singapore has a long-standing relationship built on trust and cooperation. Yes, Ben, since uh, what you have mentioned uh, before TTEG, uh, training MOU, and then very mess up. And, uh, everything sounds so familiar. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and the second, uh, yes. uh, what is the key of success of uh, MPA Singapore in manage uh, their uh, maritime transport? First is uh, fulfillment of uh, the international standard that focus on uh, safety, security, and maritime uh, environment protection. And the second, recognizing and promoting international cooperation uh, with the international maritime community. The third, uh, conducting often consultation with uh, all the stakeholders. And uh, number four, talk to industry uh, to, to reach uh, what we call here uh, link and match with the uh, need of industry, yeah. link and match. And then uh, also adopt adoption of the technology to uh, your business process, daily activity. And uh, last one, uh, especially on human resources, uh, Singapore does uh, attracting and retaining the young generation to uh, join uh, join the maritime industry. Is it correct, Ben? <laughs> perfect, Sindhu. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you very much yes, for yes. for. Uh, for summarizing the key points. Okay. Uh, once again, I thank you. Allow me on behalf of the Human Resources Development Agency on Transportation, Ministry of Transportation Indonesia, to express my sincere gratitude and appreciation to Mr. Benjamin Wong, our speaker today, and also all the Singaporean delegations for your successful deliberation of this uh, general lecture. I would also like to express my sincere thanks to the organizing committee who have worked tight uh, tirelessly and uh, to prepare this meeting so well and of course to my colleagues Miss Wenji Lee, Miss Kinho to their support and coordination to make this even happen nicely and smoothly. I hope this col collaboration between Agency of Human Resources uh, Development on Transportation and MPS Singapore will strengthen cooperation between Indonesia and Singapore. Once again, I thank you and I hope we come across to another webinar or another general lecture. Stay healthy, everybody. Thank you so much. You too. You too. It was, it was our pleasure, Sindhu. It was our pleasure. I, I, I hope everyone found the lecture useful. Thank you. Gemma, back to you. Terima kasih. Thank you, Ms. Sindhu. Ladies and gentlemen, finally, we've come to the end of this event. But before that, ladies and gentlemen, the head of Human Resources Development on Transportation Agency would like to give an, a token of appreciation to speakers, 
welcoming remarks, moderator, and participant for their support for the success of this event. So uh, as appear on the screen, the first token of appreci appreciation is given to Mr. Tan Ho Son as welcoming speaker. I will convey this to Mr. Tan. Thank you. The next one is um, goes to Mr. Benjamin Wong as our speaker today. The third token of appreciation given to Mr. Kin Ho Tang for his support and his assistance. <laughs> And also to Miss Winji for her support and assistance. And for our moderator today, Miss Sindura Hayu. Now to conclude today's event, I will invite everyone to turn on your camera to have a photo session. Is that done? Oh. Ready to give your big smile. Ready? All right. One, two, three. One more. One, two, three. Again. Last one, again. <laughs> Ready? One, two, three. Thank you. Thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your time and kind attention. Terima kasih. Have a nice rest of the day. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank <laughs> you.